Hello again, this is Upstart Madhawk. And today we are playing Battletech. A classic 80s, 90s, about giant armored combat in the 31st century. If you know Mech Commander or Mech Warrior, then you know Battletech. It's the same thing. You have humans inside giant robotic suits called battle mix. And uh, that's what we're gonna play. Alright. Been looking forward to this game. Played a battle type campaign with default difficulty settings or a custom campaign. I'm gonna go for uh, standard. Turns can sensor lock your units, allowing them to hit. To be hit by indirect fire, being out of being out of sight may not mean you are safe. Taking a while for loading. Here we go, here we go. That's moving. You can speed up any move or attack animation by pressing the space bar. In 2766, Stephen Stefan Ameris of the Rim World Republic launched a bloody revolt that destroyed the Star League. So. Supposed to load? Ah. Loading times. There we go. I hear something. I am Kamea of House Arano, High Lady of the Oregon Reach, Protector of Koromadir, and the Sword of Restoration. But I am not a hero, no matter what the stories say. A hero would have sacrificed more, compromised less. A hero would have done better. You know this, of course. You were there. My father used to tell me stories about the ancient times. About the Star League. A golden age of prosperity. Upheld by the great mech warriors of old. Guardians of the innocent. Protectors of the peace. I always dreamed of following in their footsteps. I was too young to see the truth of things. After all, it wasn't heroism or a noble cause that won me the throne. It was hiring a mercenary, skilled enough, perhaps ruthless enough, mm. to carry the day. Hiring you. I still don't know if you fought for honor or for the thrill of it, for belief in my cause, or just in my money. But whether it was your noble heart or mercenary mind, your actions gave us hope. That makes you a hero in the eyes of history. Whether you believe it, that's up to you. Restoration. Well, 
welcome to the Oregon Reach. The Oregon Reach is a small kingdom in the rim world, rimward for periphery, a region of space that lies in the at the outskirts of the more densely colonized inner sphere. Is that? Yeah, it's got a little. That's nice. Huh. It is home to the Oregon Coalition, a federation organized around a pro parliamentary monarchy and ruled by the Arano family. For three generations under the rule of House Arano, the Oregon Coalition has remained a relatively peaceful corner of the periphery. It is here your story begins. Interstellar state of the Oregon Reach area bordering both Capellan and Torian space. Oh nice. Growing out of the trade partnership in the mid 29th century, the Oregon Co Coalition was formed, es formally established in 2910 by High Lady Cor Kiona Cor Ariano. I can't say that girl. In the past hundred years, the coalition has grown up from four systems to a total of 23 systems. That must be it. Let's see here. Yeah, background, appearance. Menu. I don't want to do that. Let's see. There we go. Decades ago, your family came to the reaches from. Let's see, we got Karita, Merrick, Davian, Steiner, Liao. Uh, Majesty of Can Canopus, sorry, Torian Co Concordat, the Rimward Periphery, or the Deep Periphery, oh, that's nice. Let's see, is there a difference? Do I get any bonus? Elf in the combine tend to be fierce, disciplined, and relentless fighters. No matter the odds they might face on the battlefield. Although the Draconis Combine is ethnically diverse as any of the vast interstellar empires, it is also one of the most culturally homogeneous over centuries of rule. The founding House Karita has succeeded in uniting the people of the Combine into a single culture, one heavily molded around medieval Japanese society. While some, most notably the descendants of the conquered Principality of Rashigal, continue to, sh to shape at the uniformity of Draconis society. Overall, this has created a more o cohesive populace and military than seen in the other great houses of the Inner Sphere. That's the Honor the Dragon. Yeah. Merrick, the Free Worlds League. Mech warriors who hail from the Free Worlds League tend to be passionate, enduring fighters who value justice and equality above all else. The oldest and theoretically most democratic of the great successor states of the Inner Sphere, the Free Worlds League is actually a broad coalition of many minor noble houses. For most of the League's history has been ruled under martial law by the Captain General, who by tradition is from House Merrick. The cultural diversity and relative independence of its component re regions are at once the greatest strength of the Free Worlds League and its greatest weakness. Uh, my childhood comes back to me. The Federated Sons House Davian. The mech warriors who hail from the Federated Sons tend to possess more finely honed skills and better equipment than their counterparts from other regions of space. They often see themselves as a righteous, as righteous warriors and champions of liberty, sometimes to a fault. Though nearly extinguish, extinguished by the Draconis Combine in the First Succession War, the Federated Sons, a constitutional monarchy ruled by renowned House Davian, has become arguably the most, da most powerful of the five great successor states. Though skillful military through skillful military campaigns and subtle diplomacy, House Davian has significantly increased the number of star systems under its control in the last two centuries. Ah, 
Steiner, the Lyran Commonwealth. Mech warriors who hail from the Lyran Commonwealth tend to be hardy, well equipped, and well trained, though they have also earned a reputation for not being particularly strategic thinkers on the battlefield. Wealth is the greatest strength of the merchant princes of the Lyran Commonwealth, ruled by House Steiner. Despite a number of humiliating defeats in the first two succession wars, the Lyran Commonwealth has bounced back thanks to the combined strength of its economy. The biggest of the five great houses of the great successor states, and its control of the Inner Sphere's largest functioning battle mech factories. What the Lyran Commonwealth may lack in military prowess, it makes up for with raw numbers and industrial scale. The Capellan Confederation, House Liao. Mech warriors who hail from the Capellan Confederation are dedicated and steadfast combatants capable of holding the line and often surpassing those opponents who would make the mistake of underestimating them. The Compellon Confederation has suffered the most at the hands of the other successor states over the last two centuries of war, having lost nearly half of the territory it once controlled at the height of the Star League's rule. Over time, the leadership of House Liao, Liao has transformed the Compellon Confederation to a socialist police state of a highly regulated economy. Most Capellans take great pride in their citizenship, which must be earned through service to the state. Magistry of Canopus. Mech warriors who hail from the Magistry. Majesty? Uh, magistrary. Uh, magistry of Canopus can run the gamut of skill and fighting styles, but they often favor clever and unorthodox tactics on the field. While smaller than the great successor states of the Inner Sphere, the Magistry of Canopus is one of the major powers of the Rimward Periphery. The Magistry is a matriarchal society led by the Magistrix. This is an electric elected position open to any woman but largely controlled by House Contrella due to the family's popularity. The Magistry supports an open society that ensures the personal liberty of all of its citizens and their right to live their lives as they see fit. The Torian Concordate Mech warriors who hail from the Torian Concordate tend to be stubborn and aggressive. They can be quick to anger but are nonetheless skilled and perceptive combatants. Founded as a constitutional monarchy under the leadership of House Calderon, the Torian Concordate is the strongest military power of the Rimward Periphery. It is also one of the oldest surviving realms of human civilization, having been formed long before the creation of the Star League. Torian citizens enjoy extensive freedoms guaranteed by the Concordate Charter take pride in defending those freedoms through compulsory service. The Torian Concordate has long had a, an antagonistic relationship with the Inner Sphere, particularly the Federated Suns. The Inner Sphere is uh, made up of the Draconis Combine, the Free Worlds League, the Federated Suns, the Lyran Commonwealth, and the Compellan Confederation. It's 150, um, or is it 250 um, light years uh, distance from the Earth, or Terra. So it's this big circular space, and it's split up by um, these these uh, star nations here. Uh, let's see. There's no easy way to characterize mech warriors hailing from the rim word periphery. They can be anything from petty thugs to rest ruthless tacticians to skilled and honorable warriors. The nations and minor noble houses of the Rimward Periphery have long played a role in shaping humanity. The Star League's uh, downfall began in the Periphery, eventually leading to the current tattered state of this, these sep desperate star systems on the edge of known space. The Periphery is still the galaxy's frontier, where the great houses of the Inner Sphere play deadly politics. Petty bandit kingdoms thrive and pirate bands prey on the minor noble houses 
trying to survive in a hostile environment. Of course, you got the deep periphery, which is further out. Mech warriors that hail from the deep periphery are rare, but even rarer is a mech warrior who will admit to such an origin. Beyond the outermost edges of the periphery lie depths of space that remain uncharted and unknown to most of human civilization. Little is known about this, these regions, but they are far from an uninhabited. The deep periphery is littered with abandoned colonies, small outposts, isolated from the rest of humanity. After the fall of the Star League, General Alexander Kerensky led the remnants of the Star League Defense Force into the deep periphery disappearing from the inner sphere and from recorded history until 3050 when they come back but that's something else I probably shouldn't have said that spoilers right so I think I'm gonna go with the Lyran Commonwealth a bit of a Steiner person myself I like the like the assault lance the assault scout lance Let's see. you are of noble birth though immigrants to the <clears throat> Though immigrants to the Oregon reach, your family soon established a comfortable presence in the small backwater system on the edge of Oregon space. By the time you were born, your family had become the de facto ruling nobility of the system's only inhabited planet. You were the oldest child, heir to the family's titles and ancestral battle mech, an old blackjack BJ-1. This is where you met Raju Mastiff Montgomery, a veteran of the Succession Wars, whom your parents hired on for a season to train you as a mech warrior. Raju was a strict but capable teacher, and you quickly became a skilled pilot under his tutelage. It was an uneventful life. A uh, battle-scarred mech warrior with nearly 40 years of combat experience, in addition to a mercenary work. Mastiff has served as master at arms for master at arms for a number of noble houses training their, their scions into the arts of war. The ladies Camilla Arano and Victoria Espinoza have both benefited from his training. And it's blackjack. Was that a medium mech? I think it was. Both long and close range engagements, a pair of AC 20s backed by four medium lasers, Alpha Strike, jump jets, high ground from over. Yeah. Do. Until the day after your 16th birthday when. Uh. Oh! Nice. You are exiled. Once promising the young sign of the family, you committed an unforgivable transgression and were sentenced to life exile. You stole away from set off. Struck out on your own, family went bankrupt. Call your own. Family died in an accident. Jump shot. Your name, Powdery and Guts. Gunnery and Guts. See, power destroyed. You defeated the betrayers, but you were a sole surviving member of your house with nothing left in your ancestors. Mm. Well, this is a common one to use, though, so I'll take that one. Out on your own, you fell into life of. Uh, Regan Coalition soldier, I'm sure your prospects you travel to here. Capital of the Regan Coalition is listed in the Coalition military. You quickly rush to the range to push yourself to Frontier Pirate. That sounds pretty good. Solaris Gladiator. And Sphere Mercenary. Get away from it all. You joined up the entire. Tighten the crew, took back, took time, but eventually proved your worth and became part of the family. It's your freelancer. Merchant Guard. Ah, yeah. Providing security as a guild's uh, caravan made trading runs to the interfering periphery. It was largely an uneventful life, but you were able to put your mech warrior skills to good use. 
Occasional scuffle with pirates and uncooperative local governments. Gives plus one to piloting. Sure, mercenaries plus one to tactics. Pirate. I don't know. Solaris God Eater sounds pretty cool. But since I am or the merchant guy, so. Until years later, you cross paths with Raju Mustif Montgomery once again. While escorting a supply caravan to a small outpost on the outskirts of Regan Reach, you were set upon by pirates and left for dead. Raju happened to be visiting the capital city and picked up your distress call. Upon rescuing you, he offered you a job at, in the House Arano Royal Guard. So it is that you find yourself reunited with your old mentor, preparing your ancestral blackjack for guard duty on the coronation day of Lady Camilla Arano. Okay. Let's see. Character portraits. Last name, first name, mech warrior. He. What's that they? Can't be a they. It's only he and she. Male or female. Let's see here. Uh, executioner. Backstep. Firefly. Uh, I like the names, the call signs, but. Uh, Say <sighs> Milas, Lawrence, Maximilian, Oh, Kiram. Darlo, or is that Dario? Eric, Spencer, Nick, that's scary. German, German, really? Garrett, Christian, Flores, Ronald, Omar, Theodore, Titus. I just could call myself. Something. Let's see, character portrait. Hawk. Mm, I customize it. Let's see, clothing. Makeup, tattoo, scar, hairstyle, eyebrows, facial hair, expression, complexion, hair roots, hair tips, eyes, skin. Mmm. -hmm. 
Yeah, I was just gonna let me see what else we got. Five look good for me. Mm. It's the little things, apparently. Um, I'll take this one, I guess. Uh, complexion. interesting. Now, honestly, if I was piloting a, a, piloting a battle mech, I would actually would want shorter hair because it could get pretty hot in those things. She <sighs> got scars.
but you know, I'm gonna go back to weapon seven. Oh, that was facial hair. Pretty cool. I like that one. Yeah, that worked. Okay, so scar. I'll go with that one. Tattoo. Go this hair tip. Eyes, skin, lips, makeup. I'll go with that. McIntyre. Uh, Maxwell McIntyre? I guess so. Uh, okay. So, your character background. Decades ago, your family came to the Oregon Reach from the Lyran Commonwealth. The day after your 16th birthday, your family was betrayed and murdered. Plus one to gunnery, plus one to guts. Out on your own, you fell into a life of a merchant guard. Plus one to pouting. So I am Mad Hawk. Maxwell McIntyre. Pronoun he. Gunnery three, piloting three, tactics two, and guts three. Talks about what is guts and improves the ma maximum health of mech warriors. It also reduces the penalty from weapon recall and sorry, weapon recoil and re increases the threshold of heat that triggers overheat. Tactics 2. Tactics increases the effectiveness of called shot opportunities. It also reduces the penalty for indirect fire and improves the minimum range of weaponry. Paladin 
melee hit chance, base sprint distance, it also improves the threshold ability of triggers unsteady, and increases the maximum level of evasion possible from movement. Gunnery, of course, is their ability to hit and not be hit. Normally, it would be to hit. It's Gog. That's the type of version I'm using. I Lord Tia Tamati. Arano 2 is dead. The Oregon Reach is left at an uncertain crossroads. Once prosperous, it is, it is now a kingdom in decline. Lord Santiago Espinosa, brother in law to the late High Lord, is convinced that the slow moving council of founding houses must be dissolved. His proposed directive would conscript their house guard and centralize power. However, uh, the High Lord's heir, the noble lady Camilla Arano, is determined to rebuild the Reach without transforming it into an authoritarian state. She refuses to enact her uncle's directive. On the morning of the Lady Arano's ascension to the throne, the loyal captain of the guard, Raju Mustiv Montgomery, makes preparations to escort her to the coronation that awaits in Cordia City. City. Arano, Summer Palace, 8.53 local time. Maneuverings of House Davian transformed the Federated Sons into a monarchy, representative democracy. Buildings can be targeted for weapon fire when you're not in combat. Just select the attack button and click on your target. Prepping for combat. Chance to hit with missile weapons is a chance for each missile to hit its target. So yeah, Battletech uh, was a, um, it still is a war game, uh, played on board with dice and uh, usually like a stand, either a paper stand-in or a uh, cardboard cutout, uh, usually models. People like to get like little pewter models and they would paint them up. And, uh, but it was uh, turn-based, so... That clip. It's loading. There you go. Session Wars began in 2786, when the Minor Minoru Kurita of the Draconis Combine declared himself First Lord of the Star League. Wolf's Dragoons appeared in the Inner Sphere in 2005. Sporting five regiments of pristine battle mix. Command interface initiated. Oh, classic back. My commander. Camera movement. Screen used to move the camera. Use the right mouse button and or Q and E to rotate. Okay, Mad Hawk. I had the Espinosa refit r yards rush the repairs on your blackjack. Looks like it's all in one piece, but we should run some diagnostics on it just to just be sure. Standard field tests, you know the drill. More importantly, though, I want to tell you more about the job I brought you out here to do. Now, do me a favor and get the battle mechs moving. Let's see if there are any kinks in the accumulators. So yeah, your turn. Round one, move your mech to the mark location, click on export, press tab. Cycle between available units. I'll come right out and say it, kid. I wasn't completely honest with you the other day. Huh. There's going to be more to this job than escort duty. This is kind of like what the uh, the the sheets you would have for um, the battle mix to calculate damage. So I can move over here. Yeah, 
and do the facing as well. E1. I brought you here because there's something wrong in the capital. It's been too quiet since Lord I Lord Samati's funeral, and I'm worried about Lady Kamiya's safety during her coronation procession. Anyway, it looks like your actuators check out. Let's conduct a weapons test. Target one of those burnt out urban mechs and open fire. It's like always saying, urban mechs. I can't prove anything, but my gut tells me something's off, and a warrior trusts their instincts. It's always urban mechs. Wait. So I got three medium lasers. I'm gonna use those fire. Engaging target. Enemy mech destroyed. Good shot. Your guns are a working order, at least. I've been training Lady Orano since she was 14 years old. She could be naive at times and proud. I have no doubt that she'll be a just and effective ruler. It's up it's on us to see her safety to Concord to Cordia City. I'll rest easier once she's in the capital and her cousin Victoria by her side. Lady Victoria, well, she's only been training under me for a single set season. But she's already shaped herself into one of the strongest mech warriors I've ever seen. Reminds me a lot of you, truth be told. Anyway, we should run a check on your targeting computer. You see that drone over there? One moving through the tree line? Put some hurt on it for me. And when and then when it turns, take it out with a rear angle shot and it's down. We'll keep moving. Camille's like a daughter to me. And her late father, High Lord Damati, was a good friend. Uh, kind of curious how this one sounds. I don't think I really need both, but eh. oh, there. Right. It's got the armor and everything. The vehicle, autopilot, loadout, target dummy, fire. Engaging target. Huh. Victoria pulls no punches, but she's been a loyal companion to Kamea since they were kids. Aside from you, there's no one I'd rather have by my side in a fight. I guess I'll go ahead and just kill it. Fire. Nice shot. Now, I don't know your, how familiar you are with Oregon politics, but the Reach has been uh, was badly shaken by High Lord Ta Tamati's death. It needs a smooth transfer of power, and Kamiya Hotz belongs to the Kumorant Throne. Go ahead and fire up your jump jets, kid. I want to see you descend this cliff, cliff face. Aim for a patch of ground there near the edge of the lake. Oh, okay, right here, jump. Let's jump right here. Engaging jump jets. Enemy detected. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Jump jets build a lot of heat, and that was more than your engine could handle. Head on into that water. We need to get you cooled off. Yeah. So uh, every every action you do has a certain amount of heat. In Battletech, you generate heat, but you also have uh, in your mech, you actually have these uh, things called heat sinks that reduce the heat for each uh, each turn. If you overheat, uh, it could cause problems, especially when you have overheated and your mech decides to shut down so it can cool off. Then it becomes a real problem. But you can do things like going into a lake 
and it will reduce the heat. Warning, plasma leak detected. Jump jet malfunction. Jump jet systems damaged. System inoperable until repaired. Oh, for the love of the gods. Of all the gods. This is what I get for insisting on a rush job. Not that I had much of a choice. The Espinosa refit yards were black backlogged like you wouldn't believe. It looked like they were trying to process every single Royal Guard mech in time for the coordination. There isn't any time for to get your jump to get your jets replaced. So we're gonna have to make do without them. Go ahead and take that mech down with a melee attack. I want to be sure nothing else is gonna break down on your blackjack before we take it out on Mario Road. On the enemy, or press B to cycle through melee targets, then click the attack button. Using gun piloting skill to hit, ignores evasive, hit removes guarded, deals damage and stability damage. Boom. Wow, that was a lot of damage. That was like a panther. Uh, good hit. At least that's solid. Alright, one last test. I wanted you to take your blackjack up to sprint and evade my attack. Crud. Push that engine, kid. If something goes wrong today, I want to know that you're mecha maneuver. Is that him? He's in a Centurion. I wonder how the Centurions look on this. Ah. The head of a panther, though. Farther you evade, you move. The more evasive charges you will gain. Or each evasive charge makes you harder to hit. Congratulations, Madhawk. Your blackjack is combat ready as it can be. Given the circumstances, for what it's worth, I hope that my suspension turn out to be unfounded, and we end the day having a good laugh about what a paranoid old man I've become. But if not, I know that you'll be ready. All right, it's time to move out. Lady Arano is waiting for us at the mech bay. An impressive display, Sir Raju. Of course, this mech warrior was a student of yours. I'd expect them to know their way around a cockpit. Allow me to introduce Camilla Arano, the soon-to-be High Lady of the Oregon Coalition. Is Lady Victoria on this channel? For the time being, my father has summoned me to the Pic Picton Docks. I have a fleet inspection and a tour of the family, the family refit yards to preside over because, before the coronation. Behold the responsibilities of a noble daughter, a fount of tedium that never runs dry. I know the feeling, cousin. By this time tomorrow, I'll be responsible for the entire reach. Give my best to your father, and don't be late for the turn tourney. The gambling dens are already taking bets on how long it'll take me to cripple that customized monstrosity you pilot. Ha 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 ha, bold words, cousin, but only... But the only victory they'll be celebrating is mine. You may be ascending the throne today, but my Kaga is more than a match for the family heirloom that you call a battle mech. And in, and in the arena, I reign supreme. We'll see, cousin. We'll see. At any rate, I will say, see you at the tourney grounds. Sir Raju, I'm ready to go when you are. Overland, along the Comorant Road, as is the Arano tradition. I, Camilla. 
will get you there in one piece. Madhawk, fall in behind me, and remember what I told you. Mission successful. Generate no heat when fire, but they quickly overheat an enemy about me. Which is good. Cavern's armored cavalry, the Big Mac, is one of the largest and most successful mercenary units in history. Cavern's. I remember the Oregon Reach of old, the time of the Great Expansion. I was just a boy then. Proudly we went forth, bringing the light of our coalition to so many systems. And for what? To see our great kingdom slowly waste away? Year after year, the Council deliberates while our economy falters and the wolves bay at every door, while covetous neighbors plot against us. Well, I say, it can go no further. We are here today because if Lady Arana will not act, someone must. I know what I'm asking of you. You will face former comrades, or even loved ones, on the battlefield. I take up arms against my own niece. But remember, today we sacrifice so that tomorrow we can return our kingdom to its proper glory, to its proper strength. So should you fall tonight, know that you did so as true heroes of the Reach. To your stations, for the Directorate! Invasion. Attack begins. Coronation Day. Cordia City outskirts 1322 local time. I got skill, moral injuries. Long range missiles can fire over obstacles if a friendly unit has line of sight on the target. But that goes for the enemy too. Making death from above. Alright, well. Oh, that was pretty fun. I'll see y'all guys next next time. In the next video, we're going to tackle this next mission. Y'all have a good day. Crash and burn, chumps. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, okay? See ya.